<laughs> so yes, um, how do we start this? Welcome to Shield Maiden. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. Welcome, Welcome to Shield Maiden Sagas. It's there you Tuesday. go. <laughs> On a Tuesday. And it's 846. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's already past our bedtime. Very much, in 15 brain. minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, if you watched last, or listened to last episode, I'm not used to saying listen. <laughs> yeah, well, Especially, I watched and listened. You're the, you're the top number one fan of my channel. <laughs> That's right. You are the fan. I, I'm... The actual answer is that you are the fan, the only That's fan right. of this you channel. You make videos just for me. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> um, so thank you for watching, Faith. Um, I'm so glad you had a good time watching us. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, it's, yeah. But last, la last episode, we talked about embarrassing moments, and we noticed a trend of, you know past bullies coming up a lot and we decided that it would be a good time talking about bullies yeah and embarrassing ourselves yeah we can, <laughs> we can talk about something serious instead we can open all the trauma so that's exciting who needs therapists we can have a best friend <laughs> exactly <laughs> hmm bullies 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 oh we never Welcome back to uh, our, <laughs> our, what is it? Oh, no. Shield Maiden Sagas. I knew Yay! the Maiden Sagas. I couldn't remember the first one again. Shield Maiden Sagas. Yes, welcome back. We didn't say that part. Yes, welcome back. Uh, yes. A little. You know, to, the, yeah. to the hot messes that we are. To the raw so, footage. <laughs> raw footage. Um, <sighs> for me, I think bullying was more it, it was in my middle school to like freshman time mm. where I was least sure of who I was right and I feel like that's I feel like that's pretty common I do think an aspect of bullying is even noticing it's happening to you or right. taking it to heart now take that with a grain of salt i do know there are people who have really severe bullying incidents in their life mm -hmm. um i was lucky enough to not really have any huge physical altercations with anybody right um and i think bullies came and went in my time i actually think i had more bullies when i was younger than when i was older being but in I germany also, or uh germany and maybe beginning middle school okay and then high school i think i was just really naive and didn't really care about anyone else that much like what right. they were yeah doing. and i think that perhaps people maybe said things about me but i had any idea i didn't care <laughs> like i was Valid. doing my own thing yeah i do remember one time in high school my friend telling me something that was going around that someone had mm. said where, about me where she said um, that my artwork wasn't re actually good and that the teachers had favoritism and they always picked my stuff and just oh. so she and was jealous <laughs> I guess but it really hurt me I, I, first of all I was kind of like why did my friend tell me this you know unless yeah. it was something that I had brought up to her mm -hmm. because personally I wouldn't tell a friend this unless Unless you're only... trying to start something. Yeah, unless I was telling a friend, like, say the rumor was actually something that could damage someone's reputation or, like, right. their standing in school or whatever, I right. might go talk to them and say, you might want to go clear this up with the admin and try to figure out what's going on. Yeah. But other than that, I'm not going to just tell you the nasty things people are saying. I'd There's rather no just try to redirect the attention. Right. And in fact, I'd never heard it from anyone else. I only heard it from my friend. So that was oh. that was interesting. Mm, were they an art student too? No. But I remember it really hurt my feelings because it was like, I don't feel like I'm very good at very many things. And so it was kind of the one thing that I felt semi-confident in. 
Well, you're and an then, amazing artist, so <laughs> <laughs> I have um, pictures to prove. No, even now I'm like, mm, everything I make is trash. Just throw it right in the trash. I see your buttons uh, that you used to make for Disney, and I'm oh. like, if I was younger, well, even now I would want those, especially <laughs> the dinosaur ones. But like, if I came and I was like with a family, and I had kids, and they got those pins, I would be hyping you up. I'm oh like, my god. This is drawn by my friend. <laughs> oh man. No, I uh, love your drawings. But you know that I have them on shirts <laughs> and mugs. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, I just feel yeah. like it's hard because we now live in a digital age where you can oh, see yeah. artists. It's a great way for artists to post their stuff and get mm -hmm. well known. And everyone else is a lot more hip with all the digital technology and making it really pristine stuff. And I'm just like, I just do my own thing. I, I I do recognize I have a lot of weaknesses and I want to improve, but I haven't really worked on improving those skills in like a decade. So I've stag I've stagnated. Um so I know I've really wanted to to push myself on certain things that I have always avoided because I hate drawing certain things. All right. Like, I, I don't mind drawing from life. I think anything that's alive is pretty easy to draw. Human beings, animals, all that stuff. Because it's like, if you mess up something slightly, it's not the biggest deal because we're not these pristine, perfect shapes. Right. But that's heaven it. help me if I have to draw an inanimate object. <laughs> if I have to draw landscapes or just... Oh, that's Anything my favorite. Like <laughs> so it's like I need to, I need to practice. I think I'd like to watch some YouTube tutorials and try to get better at some things. Yeah. So, you know, get have out of you, my comfort zone. Have you considered trying digital art? Because I know you do a lot of more hands-on. I you know. don't think I would like digital art. Okay. There's just something about there's just different things about it. You have to be more tech savvy. Um, That's true. I don't like how the tablets feel. Oh, okay. And also, as talented as a lot of digital artists are, there's just not the depth of texture. You just can't get it. Right. That you get from normal, actual materials. You just, you can try. And as I've said, there are very talented digital artists out there. Yeah. They're, they've done amazing stuff. And then there's a the other good thing about it is it's a lot easier to clean up mistakes or fix things or even tr experiment with different colors. You can take the same oh, yeah. piece and then fix change the colors to try different things. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder and long, yeah. more time consuming. <laughs> but I'm I'm more hands on. I need it to be physical. So I don't know if I'll ever get into digital. I'm a dinosaur that way. We love dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, we do. I'm going to incorporate dinosaurs in every single one of these episodes <laughs> in some capacity. <laughs> the word dinosaur will appear. <laughs> I was realizing my Instagram has a lot more dinosaurs than <laughs> I expected there would be. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's amazing. So yeah, I just back to the bully thing though. Oh yeah, we should really. <laughs> I just remember that really did shatter my confidence because I did mm. think there was an element of favoritism that was happening because our art teacher was insane. Uh yes, and that she and, did have favorites. And uh, I happened to be one of them and I got the art award for the school every single year and I didn't feel like I ever deserved it. I never did just because I felt like she just I was her favorite. Yeah. But I don't think I was necessarily the most talented in the school. So I don't know. I think so it's funny. So because you were uh I believe two years you were two years my senior in mm. school. My friend, she was that that favorite in my grade. Oh, uh, okay. We, we would, in my senior year, we would eat lunch in the art room until she kicked everyone out because they were too loud. Which was, she she had her days, which is fine. Everyone does, but 
she loved my friend and my friend won all these things. And that's not to say she's not an amazing artist because I think she's great. Mm -hmm. She can do digital and, you know, pen and paper, pens, pencils, whatever. I forget what that's called. What is that called? You mean just, pe just like, pencil? Like graphite? Yeah. 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 Is, there, is there a difference between like digital and like hands-on or is that kind we, of the free we thing? just say traditional art when it's when it comes to hands-on stuff and then digital okay so yeah she does traditional and digital mm -hmm. she's great at both but she was definitely the favorite which i love her but she was definitely like you could see it yeah 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 but no but when it comes to bullies for me it's weird looking back because I did have experiences especially like I said in middle school mm -hmm. but looking back it was more of how I thought of myself and still do I am so self-conscious and so afraid of people talking about me looking mm -hmm. at me that even the smallest things triggered me and I, it took me years to realize like I am very sensitive I'm a very sensitive person you say one thing, I'm going to remember it forever. Yep. But it took a while for me to realize, like, that's kind of the typical experience that a lot of kids deal with now mm -hmm. is you get upset, you hold on to these things, and you let it fester. I mean, we've seen all these shows where the bully comes back and, you know, calls his mayhem Danny yeah, Phantom, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, that's what happens, and... I realize it's hard to break it, but I don't want to live in that moment. It's so. It's also interesting that. So, Logan says this to me all the time because I've been struggling with specific people that I had a hard time with. I won't specify it's on here because in case they yeah. watch this, but there are people in my life who said some not pleasant things about mm -hmm. me to him and it broke a lot of trust I had in them and so even now it's hard for me to want to reach out and all this other stuff right. and they and recently one of them had said something like um where I where I had said I'm sorry I haven't messaged much I've just still been having a hard time getting over what happened between us you know last year and this person said, oh, you know, just, we just moved past it. It's all under the water on the bridge now. And he said, this is something he says all the time, but the, the X forgets that the tree remember, or the, how did I say it? Is, is that right? Yeah. The X forgets, but the tree remembers. Right. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, you do these things to people in the moment and you don't, maybe realize how horrible it was and yeah, the impact you had i actually you might actually like this web team um it's written by the person who made look look lookism okay I just, I just read it it's so good there's a lot of there's a lot of profanity in it <laughs> <laughs> um i kind of just ignored it got to a point where i ignored it but mm -hmm. it's called uh my life wait hold on my life as a loser and I've seen it. I have. I think it's on my list. So I'm it's not... it's basically about a guy who was bullied relentlessly to the point mm -hmm. where it gave him a stutter, and then this person, the person who bullied him, effectively ruined his life. And as you see through the course of the webtoon, you'll find out what happened exactly because it wasn't mm -hmm. it full on like it destroyed his dad's business. His dad got injured. Wow. Um, his reputation was ruined to where he can't even go to a university and make it in the world. Oh, wow. And just, yeah, he's basically just ruined. Um, and so, and then he feels like, oh, generally, bull, you know, these sort of people peak in high school, but then, you know, they don't do well after. And then he finds out the bully is a super successful businessman. Oh, of course. Yeah. And, and the bully has turned a corner, but he doesn't realize what he did. Like, he doesn't really process how right. horrible he was. And uh, in this moment, the guy runs away and doesn't watch where he's going, and he's about to fall to his death, basically. 
And as he's falling oh, wow. and he's about to die, he oh, places... spoilers, by the way. This is in the beginning. <laughs> it's in the beginning. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not this is not spoiling oh. anything. It's what it's like the first oh. chapter. He almost okay, as okay, he's okay. falling, he places this curse on the bully to to suffer oh. how he did. And so it goes back it reverses back in time like three years. And the bully oh. has wakes up in this main character's body and then he's watching himself bully himself basically that's he's, really cool. he's experiencing all these things that he had done and then he has mm-hmm. tasks basically the curse is like he can't go back to his body unless he prevents certain things from happening but he also can't yeah. change things too much otherwise he won't be feeling the suffering that he's supposed to be feeling so it's mm. like it's a very difficult balance he has to do. Interesting. But what's it's kind of interesting because obviously the bully is in the wrong. But you right. also kind of see how the victim has power. If if the kid had just if the kid had actually like said, No, I'm not putting up with this, or would do different things to improve his life. Mm-hmm. Like he can't blame his whole failure for the bully entirely right he has to fight he can't give up the way he Mm -hmm. probably did right oh my gosh do your ears get itchy too from oh i hate i hate these they get um, i was literally like itching my ear multiple times and i feel so bad they get they get all liquidy and gross and i don't like it (laughs) the things nobody talks about but everyone thinks (laughs) so there's a quote that i wrote down a while ago and it's topical with what we're talking about. Hmm. Um, but anyway, highly recommend that webtoon. Uh, oh. It was very good. And it looks like he's writing a sequel. So I think the guy's going to wake up in a different person's body that he bought. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> poor dude, man. I mean, not poor, but like, good gracious. But I, the ending actually did make me choke up. It was well written. Very well done. Oh, okay. Um. Let's see. Where did I put it? That's the real... Ah, here it is. So, this is... I don't know who said this, but it goes like this. Drop an unkind word or careless. In a minute it is gone. But there's a half a hundred ripples circling on and on. They keep on spreading, spreading, spreading from the center as they go. And there is no way to stop them once you've, once you've started them to flow. Drop an unkind word or careless in a minute you forget. But there's little waves of flowing and there's ripples circling yet. And perhaps in some sad heart a mighty wave of tears you've stirred. And disturbed a life was happy where you dropped that careless word. Drop a word of cheer and kindness, just a flash and it is gone. But there's a half a hundred ripples circling on and on. Bearing hope and joy and comfort on each splashing, dashing wave till you wouldn't believe the volume of one kind word you gave. Uh, Drop a word of cheer and kindness in a minute you forget, but there's gladness still a-swelling and there's joy a-circling yet. And you've rolled a wave of comfort whose sweet music can be heard over miles and miles of water just by dropping one kind word. I love that. Did you come up with that? No, no. I. It's oh. a quote I saw, but I loved it so much I wanted to keep it, so I put yeah. it in my journal. That's amazing. That's a great quote. So yeah, don't be mean. Be nice. <laughs> be nice. Words hurt. <laughs> they do. Oh, you know that phrase where it's like sticks and stones may break my bones. Words will never hurt me. Mm-hmm. That for me, that is like the complete opposite. <laughs> like words hurt so much more than physical pain sometimes. Mm-hmm. Actually, I know they do. Like it, it is a fact, especially with who they come from. Mm-hmm. That was something interesting I, I learned about myself at Wentworth's, actually. Mm. Um, I would get, people would say the nastiest stuff to me sometimes when, you know, that's just how customer service is. You, you all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and but, if you don't work in customer service. <laughs> but there were times people straight up called me stupid. There was yeah. one There was one lady who said you were no help. Uh, there was one person who said, are you here just to look pretty? And I kind of wish I said, why, yes, <laughs> take a good gander. <laughs> oh, I thank you for the compliment. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> That's exactly why I was hired. 
Yeah. But the eye you know, candy people, of the <laughs> nursery. People said the most vile stuff. But then it didn't really, I mean, it would slightly bother me because it's like, who says that? But then ultimately it didn't really matter. I didn't know them. It's like, who cares what this, this psycho old lady thinks about me? But then yeah. say someone from my family or someone from school that I respect mm -hmm. said something about me. That cuts. It's like a dagger. It cuts yeah. right into you. Yeah. That kind of brings up a different point for me. So it's interesting. So I mentioned a few times middle school was hard. Like I would get bullied and we can go into stories if you'd like. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, after I came through something kind of traumatic in freshman year of high school, I decided this isn't what I wanted anymore. I didn't want to sit down and just take it. So I started becoming, I think, who I am now, which is more, one, social. I had friends in each little group category of school. But I also became fiercely, like, protective. Mm -hmm. So there, I've had friends that would be bullied, and I would be the one that would just charge. Like, be like, not, not today. Not for my friend. You're not going to do that for her. You're not going to hurt her. You're not going to make her cry. And like, in a way, whether I became a bully unknowingly, like I would defend them so fiercely that I guess it can come off as like really aggressive. Mm. And it's like reflecting back, like those moments where I was definitely, I don't know, we should look at the definition for what a bully technically is, but there's been moments where I've been hurtful and rude. Mm. And it's weird because I like, you want to try to justify it as, well, I'm protecting my friend but we were all kids at the time like let's see I don't know. so i looked up this mm -hmm. is just from oxford dictionary just because you mentioned a definition so i'm curious yeah, to absolutely. see what the actual definition of bully is it says a noun as far as a noun it's a person who habitually seeks to harm or intimidate those whom they perceive as vulnerable so okay, so, so I don't know if I would define you as a bully. I now, I guess not. But as a verb, it is to seek to harm, intimidate, or co coerce. And then in parentheses, someone perceived as vulnerable. See, again, so, it's more, it wasn't, it was, it's like that mama bear mentality. Mm -hmm. Like I was always the mom of my group. So they were never, the bullies were never vulnerable. It was just they were picking on someone vulnerable, so I picked back. And well, I'm glad they like left my friends alone. I so. I don't think you were doing the wrong thing. I think I think the way schools handle bullies is so backwards. Where it's like yeah. they'll they'll say we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it. Right. And they, you know they gave them a they gave them a stern talking to. But then heaven yeah. forbid you finally snap or defend yourself and then suddenly right. you were the one in trouble. Like, you, yeah, you're, yeah. I just remember, this is a really quick, like, little sentiment about that, but my friend, who I'm still friends with, we've been friends in seventh grade and we went to college together, like, we've had a long history together. This guy was bullying her while they were in line for food, calling her short, calling her too skinny talking right behind her mm -hmm. so she can hear everything and she just she gets her food she comes back and she's got tears in her eyes and i've never seen my friend have i've never seen my friend cry mm -hmm. at this point and i realized well i have that dude in my class next period he sits in <laughs> front of me or he sits next to me so he starts and i've known he was like this like i knew he was he would just talk a lot of smack and think he's high and mighty it never affected me and because it wasn't about me or who I cared about. Um, when we get in class, he's making these jokes again. And I admit this is wrong. But I punch him. <laughs> oh, I punch him, right? But I don't I punch him in the arm. Like I but I punch him hard. Did you and did you he, tell him why you punched him? Oh no, he was making fun of somebody else at the time. So I just oh, punched okay. him. Okay. I think I said don't don't talk about people that way. Like don't talk about friends that way. Mm -hmm. and because his reaction was jesus faith i was like i was like do not mess with me and do not mess with people like don't be a bully 
something along those lines. Like, don't be, don't be mean. Um, he never bullied anyone that I heard of afterwards. So <laughs> I say job well done. Yes. I don't. You stopped I mean, the bully. <laughs> <laughs> I was always told like, don't hit first, but don't start it, but finish it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, mom. But in that circumstance, I was just so irritated and he was still talking and it was right after. So I was just like, I'm done. Did you get this in trouble? I did not. I was actually, so it was right before the teacher came in when all the kids are like talking right before the right, bell. Right, right. And also that teacher liked me. So, <laughs> and he deserved it. And, and my teacher hated that kid. <laughs> he was literally the bad kid. Like, I was like, you know what? Just, uh, yeah, he left me alone. I think I made a friend after that incident. <laughs> Not with him, with another student, <laughs> But yeah, like for me, it's like, I don't know if I was the bully there. And there's definitely, I've had bullying tendencies in, um, because of my anger management issues in middle school, but nothing... Mm. Nothing to where I picked on people to pick on people. It was more like, if you do something, I'm going to react kind of thing. I think that isn't bullying. It may just be anger issues, but. Yeah, I, which I've worked on. So <laughs> <laughs> now I, can't even, I can't even imagine because you're so friendly. <laughs> yeah, I just had a, I had to stick out my butt for a while with home life, you know. Yeah, things yeah. are bad. Things are rough, so. I had to take it out in some way and that's how I decided to, especially when people were trying to start something. That's that was when the backbone grew. But wow. yeah, we'll talk about more like we'll talk about more stories. But maybe you just kinda reflect. I think it now is be a good time to reflect. Like it's okay to admit if you have been a bully in your life, like it's it's okay. Uh recognizing, I, understanding and apologizing. Well then I think bullies are prevalent so you know we'd all be liars if everyone said right. no I, i've never bullied anybody no. it's it's a it's not okay but to admit it to yourself is the best thing mm -hmm. and i think going back and even if you don't feel like reaching out to people which is fine just recognizing you've done something that may have hurt others is a good first step i might have been a bit of a bully to my younger brother when we were younger. <laughs> oh, poor Colin. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's so he's so patient and just incredibly story we, time. We'll have sponsors and those little cuts will be sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll actually be able to afford the full Zoom <laughs> where we can just... Oh, a member. Wow. <laughs> or we can... <laughs> Or we get, yeah. I know there's probably nicer recording software as well that we can Perhaps. use. I don't know. We'll learn about we're, that later. <laughs> we're using what we got. And this is, this is more, more, I was going to say real, but there's a word I was like, authentic. That's the word. <laughs> this is what the real people look like. The common oh, man. The common woman. <laughs> <laughs> the common woman. <laughs> Uh, yes yeah, so you were telling a story oh about your let me think. brother oh should i should i say it here too oh no if you're not comfortable if you don't want to no oh right the other story i was yeah because i told you about yeah that got me confused. there was one yes. before <laughs> before that <laughs> yes so this was where i felt like i might have been a bit of a bully but my right. brother is so patient and kind and just not a complainer in any way. So I'm <laughs> honestly surprised I never got in trouble because I just teased him relentlessly. I would go poke him and just nonstop poke him. I would just, I don't even remember what I did, to be honest. I, I think I would just be really annoying because I wanted to see how he would react. Right. And and he just Valid. was so he was so chill that he never really exploded on me. But there was one mm. time I still feel bad about this. <laughs> um in German school, you were re we were required to use fountain pens for everything. So Okay. Even in math, we weren't allowed to use pencils. 
The only wow. time we used pencils was if we were drawing pictures in art class. But everything they believe they believed that it helped with handwriting the the way it was super smooth and glide, and how it would oh glide yeah across the paper, and fountain pens were kind of expensive. They'd probably be around twenty euro at the time, and oh, wow. which the exchange rate it's not it's very similar to the dollar. It's it's maybe like an American dollars, not quite tw- like if it, it was twenty euros, it was probably. 23 to 25 dollars so it's still a lot of money it's a lot of money for a pen but you could buy inserts so the pen was supposed to last a long time right and then you would buy these little inserts and anytime you ran out of ink you would just put a new one in Um, makes sense problem is there's different problems that happen with with fountain pens. Sometimes they leak. Sometimes they just decide to explode everywhere. Sometimes yeah. the nib gets caught on stuff. Just different problems that we don't have with ballpoints. <laughs> but they do they do feel super nice the way they glide. So my brother had just gotten a brand new one. It, it's the sort of thing we only got once a year, maybe every other year. Right. And he got this fresh fountain pen and he was trying to do homework and I wanted to tease him. So I come up to him. I don't know what I was doing. I was just being super freaking annoying. <laughs> and he didn't, he, being the good brother that he is, he didn't want to take it out on me. And he Aww. just, he was pressing down harder and harder on his fountain pen because he was so angry at, at <laughs> how annoyed he was getting. And he pressed down so hard that the nib snapped and ink exploded everywhere onto his paper and the table. And I just felt so bad because there's a brand new fountain pen. They're kind of expensive. And now I just made him ruin it. (laughs) No, And he was young then. Yes, he would have been... Let's see. I don't think... I might... Let's see, when we started German school, I was eight and he was six or seven. And this was probably a few years into that. So he probably wasn't even 10 yet. <laughs> what a patient child. Yeah. Good gracious. I mean, I know your brother. He is very patient, but I can't even imagine a child being so composed in that manner. And there was one time I, I re- also remember hitting him one time. I remember, I remember, well, I felt like he kind of deserved it. He was being really mean. Yeah. Because he, um, I will say one thing about him is he cares a lot about what other people think about him. He likes to put on this sort of appearance. Same. So, so he, <laughs> I remember he invited some German friends over and my parents were at home so my sister was watching us and we were playing video games and he was just being kind of a jerk to me like he was oh, trying he yeah. was trying to impress oh. his friends with yeah. and he's not normally like that when we're by ourselves you know he, right. he's nice to me but in front of his friends suddenly being a jerk to me i guess is really cool so and cool. I got so upset that I I revved up my hand and I smacked him so hard on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I did it, I went, "Oh no!" Because it was hard. I could feel how hard I'd hit him. And he start and his friends just just looked at me with fear in their eyes, like. <laughs> This is You're, what the Americans do. This is what his sister did while he had friends over. And I and he started crying and I went crap and I like went and hid in my bedroom. And then my sister came in and went, Lindsay, what did you do? Oh no! It's when you hide. It's, it's when you decide to run. No accountability for my actions. <laughs> did you did you hit him like here or like No, it was here? on it was on his back. Oh, so you hit you slapped his back. Yeah, I did not hit him in the oh. head. Okay, okay. That I thought you hit him in the head, like no, in the back no, of the head. No, no, no. Okay, so you just whacked his back. I whacked the hand. 
<laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, if if you hit him hard enough, you definitely left a red print. <laughs> oh my gosh. What did what happened after that? I don't remember. I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> I blocked it out. <laughs> I don't think oh. my, my parents probably didn't believe it happened. <laughs> they were, I like, wouldn't have. <laughs> Lindsay would never do such a thing. She's an angel. <laughs> oh, oh that was uh, that's something interesting as well. Are the si- the the bullies that aren't very obvious, the mm-hmm. ones where adults love them because they have a different persona in front of the adults, but then when they're gone. They act so different. Yeah. Um, I remember, I don't remember specific people like this that I knew, but I remember it was an issue with my nephew and some of my, his siblings. Mm -hmm. I remember he's the sort of kid who's just so smart, intelligent, kind, but he was smart. So he knew how he could, he would pick on the other kids till they would react and then they Uh, would and then the mom my sister would see it and she would think oh the other kid is picking on him and they'd get in trouble oh and and sometimes you know my mom or i would be there to to witness the whole situation and it would be like hold on he was the one who started it and the other kid finally snapped and couldn't take it anymore but (sighs) So I, I'm always interested in how there's different types of bullies. There's the ones right. who are more obvious. Mm-hmm. But then there's those ones, and those are the ones you got to watch out for, because yeah, then the, the adult... One. Yeah, when you, uh, when you go try to tell the administration of, say, a school, they go, I, oh, that, that can't possibly be this kid. They would never do that. They get straight A's. They're part of the key club. You know, they're, they're best buddies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, uh, what is it? A wolf in sheep's clothing? Mm-hmm. It's, it's very true. It's, I guess it's everywhere. There was sort of a girl like that in my church. Um, although I don't think, at least my mom saw through it. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, <laughs> I struggled with her. <laughs> I think I think you actually know who it is. I'll tell you who it is after the podcast. Oh, okay. Um, but she, I did not like her. I I know you're supposed to be heavenly and loving to all of God's children, but some of yep. those children they make it so dang hard. They make it so hard. <laughs> She she was the the one who always had super smart insightful answers in class whenever mm. teachers would talk so they they all loved her but, <sighs> but she was into all the cliques and the drama and all that mm. garbage that teenagers are into yeah. she would exclude she and her friends would exclude the kids that were more like me from activities The one thing that I remember that still makes me mad to this day. And also the other thing is it's hard to forgive people even when it's been so long. Because when I went to church with my mom, you know, she still, this girl still went to that ward. But at this point, she's a grown woman. She has two children. She's married. Wow. Wow. And. I assume she's turned herself around. She seems like a nice enough person. But I mm-hmm. could never bring myself to go say hi to her or anything. Right. Because I remembered her, the way I remember her, just years of her being mean to me. Yeah, no, I so, I think that's honestly okay. And it's like, you know what? I don't need to strike up a friendship with you, but we can at least go on living our lives and hopefully just put that stuff in the past but the yeah. thing I remember was in, so our church would do girls camp every year in the summer. Right. And you would, we would send all the girls from these, from ages 12 to 17, 18, just depend on how, where your birthday fell. Um, oh. we would, all the girls would go to this camp out for a week and we would have a theme and all these you know, all these experiences. 
and for me as a social out outcast it was there was like there's there were good and bad things about camp i liked all the camp parts <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i was never happy about the big group social aspect but anyway something fun that we would do at these camps was what we called kangaroo court and basically oh. that's an actual term i forgot what it means it's one of those like public stunts back in the old days where it would be like we're putting on a front that we're actually doing a court process but we all know the verdict anyway <laughs> oh okay i see yeah, yeah so a similar thing uh throughout the day you could write up people for minor infractions just really dumb stuff and then come up with a dumb punishment and oh, then we okay. and then at the end of the day we would have a designated judge and we always came up with a really cool outfit. It just made them dumb things that they could wear. You know, they'd be a crown, the cape, everything. And and then we would all chant as the jury after each infraction. So, for example, I remember another thing is we always have presiding brethren at the camps just in case there's an emergency. So I, oh, think, okay, yeah. I think it might have been the bishop was there that day. And... He had thrown some girls in the lake as a joke. So oh, our punish gosh. our punishment was he had to stand in ice cold water as we dumped a bucket of water on him. Um Valid. And then I wish I could remember the chant because we always chanted <laughs> where it'd be um it basically ended with us saying, You are guilty. You know? <laughs> so, so cute. It's it was really fun. So yeah. I remember there was a girl who had left for college, but then she came to visit us for fun. And so the older girls were super excited to have her come or say hi, basically. Yeah. And I thought it would be a fun my I thought it'd be a fun infraction to be like, oh, she she left us. That was isn't fair. Her punishment is we have to duct tape her to the chair. And mm. And we were all youth camp leaders at this point. When you hit a certain age, you're a youth camp leader. And you watch right. over the younger girls and you help the, the adults with certain things. So we were in charge of this. But this particular girl and the other girls commandeered the whole thing. And she said, no, we're not doing that. So, but why? Actually, why? Why not? And it's like, no, we're just not, we're not going to do it. And so we didn't get to do it because she was snotty and decided, mm. no, she's in charge and she gets to be the perfect one who decided everything that goes into the, the court. And to this yeah. day, it bothered me so much that she did that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really puts a damper on the fun vibes of doing it. Like, it mm -hmm. seemed to be a really fun thing for everyone. So well, just be like, and it's supposed mm. to be something where everyone could submit things. Obviously, you could, if there was something extreme, you could say no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we're not going to do something really mean. But that was, but, I mean, that was harmless. So, duct taping to a chair. And also, it's supposed to be a unanimous decision. We're all supposed to say, okay, like, we can do these ones or we can't do these ones. And right. she just, she decided all the ones that got to be um, used in the court, so. Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah. But mm. but I feel like I've been jabbering away. Do you have any <laughs> stories me. you'd like to share? <laughs> um, sure. So, I guess one of the first ones that ever really comes up for me in my mind is in sixth grade i had it was a rough year <laughs> but i had just lost you know having a friend she decided being popular whatever that means was better than hanging out with her neighborhood friend so i was on my own i had no friends in sixth grade until later on uh, so i was and all my friends from elementary school they just kind of drifted away so I was on my own and before uh, classes would start, before we would go to our, our first lesson, we would all gather in the gym. Do you remember doing this? You would either gather into the cafeteria or the gym and then the first oh. bell would ring and then you'd go to class. 
it was kind of how they sorted kids when buses would be coming in at different times. I'm trying so, to remember. I don't know if we, if I had that experience very much, but it makes sense. I feel like, well, I know we went to, we did go to the same middle school, right? I went to Plum Point the last year, I think. Okay. Yeah. So that was my sixth grade year. So at that time, I think upper levels were in the cafeteria and younger, lower levels were in the gym. But either way, so I'm in the gym by myself and just sitting there because that's all you can do. I mean, at the time, we didn't have phones to play on. I mean, I listened to music. That was what I had. Uh, but we didn't have all these games. Um, and a lot of people were just catching up on homework they didn't do. So I'm sitting there and a little ways away is this group of guys all from my grade. And one of them, the ringleader, stands up and goes, where's Faith Simpson? Which, if you don't know, well, now you know my full name, right? <laughs> uh, you can, it doesn't matter. <laughs> do you want me to bleep it? <laughs> no, it's literally on my YouTube <laughs> uh, what I comment under it's fine that's my full name don't wear it out um so they call my name and I know this is gonna be trouble so I don't answer I look away and I'm just like in on myself because the fact that they're asking for me but don't know who I am fi like facial wise mm -hmm. I was like I don't want any part of this the problem was they were in my first period which was social oh, studies no. And so we get to social studies, you know, we're all walking up, doing our thing. And that was actually the class I made my first friend in. Shout out to Sam Woods. <laughs> um, but I made a friend there. Yay. <laughs> That's good. But I sat, so the desks were set up to where there were rows. How do I? I have a pen. Real quick. <laughs> Okay. You see the three lines? Yes. Okay. It was really, it was more, oh, I wrote my name. Isn't it fun? That's oh, beautiful. It was really, so the teacher's desk was here. I sat in this middle row. And then these all faced the board. <laughs> this was the board. So the front board was here. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm looking at it through the opposite. Front board here. All the desks faced this way, and then we were on the side. Oh, so, you're so we had okay. to, we had to angle ourselves to see the board. So for those anyway. listening, if yeah. you're not watching, there's basically you walk into the classroom, and you would see that there's on the right side of the room there's your chalkboard, smart board, there's but there's the teacher's desk in front of the to the left of the teacher's desks are other desks, but they're facing the door as you're walking in and then the middle of the room has desks that are facing the chalkboard right so there was three rows facing the chalkboard and three rows facing the chairs facing the chalkboard essentially um and so i was sitting in the front of the middle chairs that faced the other students um the group of guys sat in the back of the row that faced the chalkboard and one of them comes up to me and I know all of them because I hate all of them at this time because I <laughs> oh, knew they were I, they were the same group that was in the gym and they were just known as like the popular idiots right uh, I remember just... having those in high <laughs> school as well <laughs> yeah uh, like you're like who even are you but so one of them comes up to me and is like he wants to know if you like I'm not going to say his name. My friend wants to know if you like him. Would you want to go on a date with him? And I'm sitting here thinking, he's not very cute. <laughs> of course, I'm very shallow at the time. I'm like, this dude's not really cute. And I don't know him very well. But I didn't want to say no and hurt his feelings. So I said, I don't know. You would have thought, Lindsay, I said the funniest thing in the whole goddamn world. He runs back to his friend group and they just start laughing and making fun of me for my answer of I don't know. For what? What was so what was so bully worthy 
and that didn't leave like they would constantly send glances my way laugh and i'm just like sinking into this little abyss of a hole and like i said i didn't have many friends i didn't make friends to that class but i was like is this is this what my life is going to be like for the next three years like you're with your because it was a small school right that's right so I've had classes with these dudes my entire middle school year. And like for this to be the first kind of introduction to it, I was like, here we go. And I already told the story about me farting in class in my seventh grade year. With those the which same led guys. Different group of guys with same mentality. Yeah. And it was from a guy who wasn't, like I said, in that class when it happened. He just heard it and decided, you're vulnerable. Let's snap. So it, it's one of those things where it was like I had to I had to either disassociate myself from everyone or try to grow stronger from it mm -hmm. and try not to show it hurt until I was alone. So it was kind of that front I would put up in front of them like I was the tough girl until I was alone. And then it became and then the waterworks it turned on. And then the emotional girl came out. Yeah. Yeah, so but that was my first introduction to middle school and That's so it sad. was and I was like you don't even know my face and I know by that alone when you stood up and said, "Hey, does anyone know where Faith is?" that someone threw out my name because they knew I was like a loser, a loner. Like someone had to throw your name out, right? And I was just like <sighs> And just to clarify, you were not a loser. Oh, Carry well, on. <laughs> I try not to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what even is a loser? I feel like we're all losers in a way. <laughs> we're all losers. Put that yeah, on a t-shirt. Losers. <laughs> I'm sure it's already a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like for me, that's always the first bullying moment that really sticks in my brain because it it shaped the rest of my middle school experience, and like. I went to, so I met them in middle school. They were not in my elementary school, but they were in my high school. So I got to see the same behavior and the same immaturity just grow on different levels, but the same type of bullying. And it was like, these are the people I think peak in high school. Like, I'm just like, I'm done with you. Like, I don't know where they're at now. Last I heard, one of them works at a giant. No shade to giant workers. Your brother's great. <laughs> but yeah but it's not necessarily a position you want long term it's no. entry level stuff no so. and for someone who talked all this big shot you know where are you going in life but yeah i even had one in mid oh, i even had a bully i had this girl i hated i loathed despised in elementary school i have the firm belief oh. that some people are born to be mean they from day one they just radiate hateful energy and we talked about this briefly yeah you about, told me like, about her yeah like i just don't know if it's her home life her brother was exactly the same way something so it had to have been her home life as an adult i recognize that as a kid she was just a bully and a gross bully at that yeah, is she the I'm one not... who would stick her finger in orifices that shouldn't have your finger and then she'd like eat it? Yes, there she is. <laughs> yes, and you don't want to know the orifices she would do in public. It was disgusting. <sighs> but she was she was the type of person that we would sit next across from each other in math class and stuff because they pair us in these desk pods and she would kick me. And at the time, I played a lot of soccer. My nickname in soccer was Bigfoot because I got huge feet. I would <laughs> kick her so hard back. And you Good. know what? I'm ashamed of it. I kicked her so hard so many times. She if, would she go back kicked, to if she kicked you, you kick her. That's right. And I kicked her hard. She would she would hit me back, but it was nothing. I was like, you weakling. <laughs> I will win this. <laughs> yeah. So I guess... At that point, I wasn't vulnerable and she wasn't vulnerable. We just had mutual hate for each other. <laughs> uh, so this is this is the classic um, rival rivalry. 
all right. the true rivalry. But I never wanted to be her. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so I don't know why. I don't know why it was me. Maybe because other people were afraid of her. But I, I was just grossed out by her. <laughs> and being a gross little kid myself, like, that was a different level of gross. <laughs> she must have been pretty bad. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yes, things I will not say on this podcast. But <laughs> yeah, it was disgusting. Um, but yeah, wow. there you go. There's there's a couple stories. There's but... a couple stories. No. When I feel like I got bullied because I was American. Oh, so I've seen that, yeah. The yeah. the very the very first bully I can remember, at least in German school was this kid I didn't even know. I don't even know how he knew I was an American because he wasn't in any of my classes. But he would find me on the playground every single day. And he would follow oh me. And he would repeat the same phrase over and over. And it was Kannst du Deutsch? Which translates to do you know German? Right. And it's more slang, but essentially it means do you know German? Yeah, and I didn't know German. It's like I don't know. <laughs> nine. I, I, nine. <laughs> I would go home I, and learn phrases to to say to him to try to get him to go away. So I remember learning "go away," and I came back and I'd say "gay vic, gay vic, gay vic," and he just wouldn't leave me alone. He tormented me. It had to be a month. Every day he would. Find me at the playground and just nonstop follow me. And then I don't know what. <laughs> I I don't know if he got bored of it because I didn't really react the way he probably was hoping because oh, I didn't right. I didn't flip out. I think I'm relatively patient, so yeah. Oh, it takes I, a, I it takes a lot for me to suddenly blow up. Yeah. I actually had a day the other day where it was just like I threw my cat really hard on the ground. Like poor Logan. Oh. Oh. <laughs> really, he's, I'm having a temper tantrum and he's like, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> That's um, valid. But um yeah, this this kid he wasn't the worst. He it was just annoying. Um right. and he was definitely targeting me because I didn't know german culture or anything yeah. so i yeah so yeah. i was vulnerable the girl that there was the kid i mentioned before mm, who tormented yes. me there's also a girl who i actually hated more than i hated the turkish kid because oh, really because she thought she was my friend that was the problem mm. and but she didn't treat me like a friend she treated me horribly mm. there were times and I think it was because I couldn't defend myself properly in German. Like, it's not... I mean, I'm already a bit of a doormat. I've been working on that my whole life, but... I feel that. But at least I could at least say my position if it was in English. Right. But I, I couldn't really say... Especially if it brings up to a teacher. The teacher... Who's the teacher going to believe? The person who can barely string a sentence together or the person... Who can say, yeah. I didn't do that. <laughs> and give you a thousand reasons why. Yeah. yeah. So I remember there was a specifically bad instance where I had to leave school early. Because, oh. so we didn't have a proper playground. The States, we have these really nice playgrounds that are yeah. paved well. We have sand usually. So if you fall, you don't get hurt. And or that, we like, have all these rubber. Yeah, we have rubber. we have all these yeah. play sets that are very well maintained, cared for. We didn't really have a playground <laughs> in the schoolyard. Okay. There were playgrounds in Germany, but for some reason this school didn't have a playground. We basically had oh. hopscotch and that was Ooh. it. So you had to you just had <laughs> <Riveting>. to be, <laughs> You had to be creative to enjoy recess, which was fine. I mean, kids have imagination, so it was fine. Right. But the thing is it was basically all asphalt. It wasn't even just plain cement. It was like asphalt from the road. And then there were pebbles oh, everywhere. No. You know, oh, tiny, little yeah. tiny rocks. And so there was this one time where in school or in English class, um, 
I don't know how it came up, but uh, I sang the Zuku bubblegum song for the class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was in English. And so, you know, I sang, you know, my mom gave me a, a penny. She said, go buy some candy. I did not buy some candy. Instead, I bought some bubblegum. And, you know, it keeps going through the verses. <laughs> and this girl came up to me at recess afterward and she said i want you to sing the song and i'm saying i'm not singing at you a song Why would I that's so serenade weird. me Lindsay. it was weird enough doing it for the class let alone one person I i'm not gonna serenade her with the, the zuka bubblegum song i'm sorry can it's you serenade me Lindsay? do you want do you want me to i just appreciate your willingness to <laughs> Do you need to hear the other verses? <laughs> on our own time. On our own our time. One -on -one. Okay, okay, okay. No one else gets it. Ah, uh, yes, that's the exclusive OnlyFans page. That's where you can I hear me I'll... sing the super. I... I think Patreon is more our speed, not OnlyFans. <laughs> I know Logan's like, what in the Hades? Oh. <laughs> uh... He's we will not be doing an OnlyFans. <laughs> Just to clarify, there's no OnlyFans account to fear. Okay. Oh, he's running. <laughs> <laughs> clarify, it's a Patreon. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how Patreon works. <laughs> I don't either. Huh? <laughs> what? He, he said I was gonna sub. <laughs> Yeah, you get to see my my. Thumb we'll work. do our feet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> uh, bullying took on the OnlyFans <laughs> to Wiki Feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my cheek! Uh, um, bubble gum. We were yes, singing a song. So I go outside, <laughs> and this girl says i want you to sing the zuka bubbles gum song and i said heck no i'm not doing that why on right. earth would i sing this song to you alone that is weird <laughs> yeah, and she weird. but she wouldn't leave it alone she kept following me and being like sing me the song Lindsay." and i said no <laughs> and i was oh. i was obstinate i said no it's like and shrek do the roar <laughs> Do the roar. <laughs> Do the roar. <laughs> Do the roar. I love Day. how. Yeah. Hey, did... <laughs> I love how Shrek just goes roar, and then the kid's like, "Not good enough. <laughs> Not good enough." <laughs> Do the roar. So, so after I tell her no, she pushed me hard. And I fell onto the gravel. Oh no. And it got, I fell so hard. Some of it, I wasn't able to catch myself all the way. Right. So some of it got in my face. Oh, I had God. rocks embedded in my cheeks and my hand and in my hands and they were bleeding. And <sighs> it was bad enough where we couldn't, the nurse couldn't pull them out. So she called my mom and she came to pick me up. Um, and then I remember crying just because, not just about the rocks, I felt more upset that I just, I mean, quite literally was getting pushed around. It is so, yeah. I just For nothing. couldn't, and I couldn't defend myself. Like this girl was always tormenting me. And the worst, as I said, the worst part was, I don't think she realized she was being mean. I think she thought we were being friends and she thought she was so cool because she was friends with the American girl. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're so mean to me. I, I did find. Go ahead. No, I'll go ahead. I'll save it. So, I will say, my mom. I think my mom knew more about her than I did, and she had mentioned to me that she had some mental handicaps. I'm not a hundred percent mm. sure what those were because she didn't have trouble speaking or anything. But I think there was right. something. I don't know what it was. And then I remember her mom, I think, had cancer towards the end of fourth grade. 
okay. and she tested very poorly on her entrance exams, which is fair enough because she was going through some yeah hard times. But that doesn't excuse you for pushing me into some gravel. Okay. No. <laughs> but I wonder if it's like, I mean, American media, especially at the time with it was probably like, oh, Americans are aggressive. Like, this is how they show I don't affection. Know. I don't, I don't know if that's it. I just think, I just think that I'm so timid. Right. I'm not as Easy timid target. as, I'm not as timid as I used to be, but I think it was just so easy to make me do whatever you yeah. wanted. Right. Although maybe not necessarily because I still said no, I'm not singing the freaking bubblegum song. Right. You had but, your standards. <laughs> but I mean, there's I had to pick and choose my battles, man. It's like sometimes I mean, it's just yeah. easier to be like, okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> For that kid that was telling you, like, like, what was he asking? He said, Do you speak German or do you know German? Right. You should have just said Zempf for mustard. <laughs> You should have given him that every day. Just every day. I should <laughs> have. have I should have looked up the weirdest words. Yeah. Just. Zimf. <laughs> you say it with such confidence. Government. Pineapple. <laughs> I don't think. I can hear you. Oh, hello. Oh, now I can. We oh, weird. I guess I wasn't loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we're just learning to beatbox now. Oh. Beatbox so the I, bullies yes. out of your life. They, they will give you no more strife. <laughs> <laughs> Smack them, stash them. Out of your head. Stash him away. <laughs> and then when you go to to lay in your bed, they will haunt you forever and ever to the end. <laughs> we're gonna workshop that one, Lindsay. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put that one in the work. <laughs> you don't think I'd make it number one on the charts? <laughs> Uh, I think with some fine tuning, you could have a possibility. You don't think I could have the cult following that is uh, Taylor Swift? You know, uh, I don't think anyone should have that cult <laughs> no. following. It's, it's creepy. creepy. <laughs> it's very creepy. Yeah. So, what's your uh, what's your story? Yes. So let's wrap up this long podcast episode with one last story. This one's a good story. It's actually a funny one. I didn't realize. Um, happened until i was informed by my mother um so this happened when i was in elementary school and i have an older sister who's three years older than me so when i was in kindergarten she was in second grade right second grade <laughs> we had moved when i was in kindergarten and she was in second grade so we moved from a different county over and she was a shy, quiet kid, similar to, I think, what Lindsay would have been like. I think you and my sister were very similar growing up. Uh, she was a very tiny stick of a human. And hey, me too. <laughs> I love my sister. But she was, she was frail. Um, and she was quiet and didn't really stick up for herself. Uh, and so one thing about my elementary school is we shared a playground there was a small playground for the little kids and then the big play, play playground for the third and fifth third fourth and fifth graders i happened to be out on recess apparently with my sister who i saw was getting bullied by this one boy in her her grade apparently i found out later from my mother he had bullied her more than once and picked on her and you know same stuff that boy did you in germany mm -hmm. uh, a little less speak english do you that was you. that was that was not a sentence you <laughs> anyway. sound like yoda yeah i know <laughs> um 
and if, and they were standing so my sister's getting bullied and the teacher was right next to them but did nothing so as my mom tells the story my little butt marched all the way across the playground straight up to this kid and i punched his nose in you did you break his I, nose my mom wouldn't tell me so i don't know it wouldn't surprise me if i like made his nose bleed i think i made his nose bleed i don't know if i broke it i don't think so You're but a i did punch hero. him i did punch him right in the the nostrils <laughs> um and i after that because because i saw he was hurt he was like my sister we didn't have the best relationship growing up but like as i mentioned right in the beginning of this i was very i'm very protective that was something i'd always been since i was young so when my mom told me that she was shocked i didn't remember it um because we were recounting the days where i would get in trouble and this was one of them <laughs> and i remember i don't remember she told me that i was sent to the principal's office along with my sister and that kid and the principal wanted to expel me as a kindergartner mm. for punching this wow. kid. My mom went in and started yelling at, you know, the superintendent and principal saying, well, if your teacher had actually done her job and stopped the bullying that she was standing next to, my daughter wouldn't have to defend her sister the way she did. And that kind of shut them up real quick. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't, I never got expelled. I never got detention, never got suspended or anything like that. My mom took us out the rest of that day and everything went back to normal. But it was just, it's so interesting because I feel like my sister, we don't talk about this much because she hasn't, I don't bring up when she was bullied because she's also been bullied throughout her whole life. Um, I don't bring up the situation, but it's something I think she remembers she just refused like she just doesn't talk about it because mm -hmm. i think it's it's hard it's it's one of those things where she probably feels embarrassed to feel this way and to have her little sister fighting a battle for her yeah even if i'm like so young i don't remember it um but i was i was all that way throughout high school for her too uh but yeah that was that was one of the earliest memories where i just like punched this kid in the nose and didn't get in trouble so yay <laughs> I'm glad you you stick up for the little guy. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I wish yeah. I was more courageous and stood up for people. I'm too cowardly. <laughs> I've been wanting I don't think to it's be coward. better. I think it's self-preservation. <laughs> <laughs> I think I lack that feeling. <laughs> I'm like, whatever happens to me happens. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I think that was a really, when my mom told me that story, it really put, it shifted a lot of things into perspective of why I act the way I do and how far back it was like ingrained to feel this way. Because mm -hmm. I like when I would talk to my friends, they never had that possessive protective feeling over their family the way I did. Because I'm very much like, like you go through me to get to them. And I'm still that way. I love my mother. I love my sister very much. And if anyone hurts them, they deal with me first good so but it's yeah i feel like that's a really happy kind of story to end on even though it's about punching a kid in the nose i think it's it's interesting to know that that happened and that's where it all started for me and that's how faith became a superhero oh you that's know there's right. a book called faith and she is a superhero i haven't ah, read it yet, but i have it mm -hmm. you should read it She's maybe say maybe someone oh. stole all your stories and wrote it i can't fly i want to <laughs> but i can't <laughs> no i would love i'd love to write a story in my own life. i would love to write a book one day when i have the willpower to sit and not do schoolwork. <laughs> yeah that's fair yeah but yeah anything I, you'd like to end on well i should i'm surprised i didn't bring up shame all very much this episode oh, i want to yeah. i wanted to i'll bring him up a little bit just because he was kind of one of the funnier bullies he was one of the ones <laughs> where he bullied me but i don't think it hurt me nearly as much as that uh, that girl did because she was right. a lot more personal and she oh, treated yeah. she treated me like i was stupid 
Um, <laughs> Even when you said that you were angry. <laughs> the few times you'll see Lindsay angry people. <laughs> write it down in history. <laughs> oh. Well, he, he did all sorts of nonsense. He was someone who I think liked to stir the pot to see what would happen. So, mm. for example, I remember he brought a stink bomb to school one time. I, I've wow. never seen... It was odd. It was in... I think whoever makes these prank packages make them like this on purpose so that a teacher won't see that it's very obviously a stink bomb. Mm -hmm. um, but we had... Of all the days for him to do it, it was for a nice picnic day. We <laughs> We had it... And it was an indoor picnic, so we moved all the desks in a rectangle around the edge. of, mm -hmm. And so we could enjoy the middle of the room, and we all brought food home to share with the class, and it was going to be really fun. And he... I didn't even... It, this thing was odd. It, it looked like one of those hand pocket warmers. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. It was, in a, it was in this plastic, shiny packaging, and it had a little snowman on it. I remember this vividly. <laughs> and I remember... I remember him running to the middle of the room with this thing, and I'm thinking, I, you know, I'm wondering what this is. And he, he yeah. had his little lackey. He was one of those bullies who had a lackey who always little followed lefty. him everywhere. <laughs> and I remember his name, too. Oh. So... I remember they ran to the middle of the room and he basically bent the side of this packet and mm -hmm. then it swelled up like a balloon. I'd never seen anything like this before. It swelled up and it made this hissing sound and everyone stared at it. We're just wondering what the heck is this thing? What's about to happen? Oh my gosh. And then it explodes. <laughs> like, like full on. It popped and there was a flash of light and then... Very small, minor. It wasn't anything oh, okay. serious. I'm like, good, this is police. 911. But, but it stank, and we had to evacuate the room, and for a couple weeks, it just smelled bad, and it's like, thanks, Shamal. You, you really are a wonderful guy. <laughs> Stand-up citizen you are. <laughs> and then there were other things he did. I remember he brought in Turkish delight for everyone, so something we yeah. did for our birthdays was we would bring in a treat to share. So it'd be mm. like, it's my birthday, let's celebrate. And I brought some treats. And um, every year I'd always do something more American or something different because right. that's not something people would normally have. So I remember chocolate chip cookies yeah. were kind of unusual and everyone was excited about those. And I remember my mom always made homemade cream puffs and she made them giant. I'd actually never, I didn't know they were supposed to be small. Oh, really? I'd, I'd, because my whole life, my mom would make them like this, where they're super puffy. Whoa. And they're full I of like air. Moms. Yeah, and then she would fill that sucker with cream. And that, oh. that was my favorite thing. I always asked for it on my birthday. And nice. so I, I asked her to bring them in for me for, for class, because otherwise they would melt. Right. So she brought them in. But anyway, so it's his birthday. He brings in Turkish delight. And I've okay. never been a fan. I don't know if you've ever had it or you know what it is, but I know what it is. I've never actually had it. It's I don't think I would like it. <laughs> it's one of those things where I think you have to be raised somewhere where it's more common. I know mm. in Germany and a lot of European places they love gelatiny things. I've never yeah, been a the huge texture. I've never been a huge fan. And so it's this gelatinous texture, kind of mealy, and on top was powdered sugar. And so I, I decided, you know, I don't want any. He can, everyone else can enjoy it. And there were these strange stringy things inside of the delight. So, and people Paper? were saying, <laughs> people were saying, shame all, what, what's in this? And he refused to say what it was. So my teacher looks at the packaging. She starts listing off these ingredients. And people are chewing. They're all looking over to see what, what she's I'm saying. I'm afraid what's in this thing. She goes, you know, there's cornstarch, there's sugar. And then she kind of paused. I remember the pause. And then she said, worms. <laughs> <sighs> like, just straight up earthworms were in, were in, was in this Turkish delight. And I remember kids what? just going, oh, oh. 
you could see the smile on Shamal's face because I think he just liked the chaos. And I remember my friend Christian leaning over to me and he lamented, I had three. <laughs> no. And I said, I'm glad I didn't have any of them because oh. I don't like Turkish delight. Was it? Okay, let me ask this. This may be a stupid question. Did he put those worms in there or was it a company that did? No, I think it was, I think he brought in this stuff i think it's something that actually people eat the thing is it's not a common thing to have not a common ingredient and i think he knew you know people were not going to appreciate having earthworms in their turkish delight i had three that's <laughs> <laughs> so funny oh, poor man. Oh. and then i just i remember i'll tell you two more things and then we can finish for yeah. the day so the, for the night <laughs> for the night it's daytime somewhere you're right five so, o'clock somewhere <laughs> yep happy hour so <laughs> so he there was this one time so we actually had these workbooks in german school they were notebooks and they would have pictures and they would have different activities of of just different learning activities. So some of them would be math related, others might be spelling related, and you would fill in the letters in the correct areas, blah, blah, blah. And right. one of them, I remember we had to fin put, fill in the correct words in this paragraph. And then my teacher straight up, sometimes I think she just gave us busy work because she just wanted us to shut up. We, she that was a she was a teacher who could not discipline us. That is a that is a discussion for another time. I could do a yeah. whole episode on this teacher. And <laughs> and uh, she so I think she's like okay I don't know what else to do with these kids. So she said I want you to do a handwriting exercise. You're going to rewrite this paragraph that's in this book and you're just going to write it on a separate piece of paper and i'm going oh finally something i don't even have to think about think. because everything for me was so hard you know right um so it was very simple it was basically just look at what's written here write it over here that's it that right. is the assignment but for some reason people were not doing very well they were not they were going up to turn in their papers and she'd look at it just going like what the heck guys you're using pencil or you spelled something wrong you need to go fix that so i bring mine up and i'm a little scared because it's like how are germans oh, messing say? yeah how are germans messing yeah. up this very simple assignment and then this also embarrassed me because it felt like she was making a big deal out of something that was just so easy now yeah. that I think about it, I wonder if she even made if she made this assignment to help me feel better about myself or something. Oh, because I because basically, I remember she looked over my work and she went, "Even the American could do this correctly." <laughs> and she okay, just she was so disappointed in how the class was failing at this very simple assignment. Gosh. And I was so embarrassed to be put on the spot like that because it's it's <laughs> yes. such a simple thing to do. I'm just confused. I'm so confused why she was making a big deal about it. And then everyone started cheering. They were like, yay, good job, Lindsay. And then she, no. she all runs up and he grabs me and lifts me up like I'm a champion in a movie. You know, like, like I've just won the <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm just flabbergasted. I start. And I I admit at this time, I cried a lot in public because I was just, I didn't know how to handle what was going on a lot of the time. So I start, I start crying because I'm just like, what the heck? How do I respond to this? And then, and then my teacher, I think, thought that was a little far. And she just went, shut up. Shut up. She always screamed. She never, she was a, not a quiet teacher. <laughs> she yelled at all of us. Oh my gosh. And she always got us all in trouble too. I, I would get lumped in with everyone. She would do group punishments where it'd be like, oh, a lot of the class got in trouble. I'll just punish the whole class. And it's like, I didn't even do anything. So, that is so dumb. So anyway, Shamal did that to me. 
And then so, <laughs> you just start crying. <laughs> and so this is this is where I'm gonna end what I'm gonna end on because this was a petty thing that I tried to do. And it's really embarrassing thinking about it, thinking that this plant plot would actually work. But I was so fed up with how he would treat me and how he behaved and I I decided to try to 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 wedge to put a wedge in between him and his lackey. Oh, I love it. And this. so so I got out this note card. This was also stupid too because it was an American 3M note card, something where it's like Germans don't have this product. No. <laughs> and then I remember writing in purposely worse handwriting than I had to try to match this his lackey's handwriting. Mm-hmm. And I wrote this sort of breakup note where it's like, Shay mom, I I can't stand how you act. We can't do this anymore. I don't want to be your friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I put this note on his desk. I love this. At, at the right before recess. And then I remember, whenever you do something wrong, you know how you suddenly you think everyone's talking about you? Yes. So later, I see him and his lackey go up to the teacher, because I'm pretty sure they figured out really fast that he didn't write this. All right. Because Shamo probably went, what the heck? Like, what? why did you write this, you know? And then I'm sure oh. the lackey said, what? what are you talking about? I didn't write that. Oh, no. So they get up, go up to the teacher. And I can see them talking to the teacher and I'm just sweating bullets in the corner going, they're gonna know it's me. I used the 3M note card. <laughs> I'm going to die. They're gonna target me. I'm just going, please. I don't think they figured out who it was because I didn't get in trouble. They didn't point, they didn't have a conversation with me or anything. But they I remember- didn't even realize the note card thing. I just remember that felt like I put a target on my own back. Because it just seems so obvious. Yeah. Especially with the bad grammar, probably. I'm sure I had bad grammar. Yeah. But they didn't didn't figure out it was me. And I still think, I still flush at the thought that I even thought that would work, you know? That's so funny. Like, that'll that'll destroy their relationship. (sighs) Definitely. (laughs) I did something so similar, but opposite i hoped for the opposite of what happened to you Uh yeah wait you were trying to get people together me (laughs) by using another person's name because i was embarrassed i was afraid to put my own name so you were testing to see if they so okay really quick and then i have to go yeah and i've got to go after this too um in school I had the crush on this dude in elementary school and I colored a f- picture uh, for him and I wrote his name I said to him like this guy's name but I could not for the life of me put my own name so I put this girl's name in our class that I didn't like but was friends with him mm-hmm. so I said to this guy from this other girl and put it in his desk and they sat next to each other so he pulls it out and he's like what is this she's like i have no clue because it was like i like you or something like it was Mm -hmm. like hearts and unicorns and i'm just like faith why did you do that (laughs) that's so cringy because i was friends with this dude i was like Uh... do that yeah so i tried the opposite i used somebody else's name for no point at all i'm trying to i'm puzzling over this because i'm not sure how that would it, get him there's no figure. logic yeah there's no logic i was just so embarrassed like i didn't want to write my name because i was so yeah. afraid so i was like you know what i want to give him this photo but i don't want to put my name on it <laughs> well so i don't i don't want to say the name but i think you know him from high school mm-hmm. i had a major crush on him mm-hmm. and i decided to confess to him so we were walking in between classes and my heart was doing this mm-hmm. and I finally confessed like I really really like you and then he pretended mm-hmm. he couldn't hear me so I said it again because I thought maybe he just didn't hear me because the, the class you know the rooms the the hallway's crazy right 
and he just kept walking like he didn't want to deal with the the information and then Mm -hmm. later i was getting all these people who were like oh my gosh you like him and that made me have issues with dealing with people when it came to feelings after that because right i felt like they would it it was I lost a lot of respect for him after that. I did not like him after that because who does right. that? It's like if you don't return my feelings, you could just say so, and then that's a private matter between the two of you, right? But Isn't no, it funny. He goes. This is what happened in college for you with that guy. Yep, I I did the exact <laughs> same thing. I did not learn from my mistakes. I did not learn from the pain that I had felt. Endured- <laughs> so. Yeah. It's so when I t- finally told Logan how I felt, I wasn't able to say it in person because I was so scared that uh, the same thing was going to happen. So I yeah. still feel bad that I didn't say it to him in person, but I had sent it in a message because at least I had that barrier. And it ended right. up working it's... out, obviously. Yeah, so. <laughs> ended up marrying him. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Aww. Thanks yeah. for, for this uh, lovely chat. I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Tune I, in, I love doing this. Tune in next time. I guess it won't be a podcast for our next thing because we want to talk about childhood TV shows. Ooh. Yeah, childhood TV shows, movies, and... And boy, am I excited to show you some weird German stuff. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting on. As I say, <laughs> like, there are some movies out there that I grew up watching that I feel like nobody watches mm-hmm. or has ever seen so no, i'm excited no one to... knows santa versus the snowman and it's the best <laughs> <So>. <laughs> me included <laughs> it's made by the jimmy neutron people <laughs> oh we'll have to watch a clip of that it's so fantastic <laughs> anyway well, anything to send our our listeners viewers out on well I guess I should have left that poetic quote for the end. <laughs> but yeah, be nice to people because we you remember you may not remember how someone treated you exactly, but you'll remember how they made you feel. And so right. you know, try to leave a good impression on other people. Be good. That's that's what I'll, that's all I have to say <laughs> on the matter. Yeah. I think do on to others as you want done on to you. And exactly. Remember that what when you're young, and again, this goes back to the first one when you're embarrassed, but when you're young, don't hold on to these words and regrets. They do not shape your life unless you make them. So if you hold on and you believe them, that is how your life will be. Mm-hmm. So you need to work around that. And it's going to take a while. It's It does, but you will see the other side and it's easy and you'll when, realize well, easy, you'll better. realize that bully is just a net in your existence like they will be such a small part of your life and one day you'll look back and you'll say wow this little person mm-hmm. caused me so much pain and right they don't they're like they're nothing they're, they're like a little mosquito. They yeah. irritate you in the moment, but they got creams for that now. You can just <laughs> wipe them off. Oh, uh, I know we didn't really cover this, so it's a discussion for another time. But if you are experiencing these things, please find that person you trust. Sometimes you feel like you're alone. There are going to be times you feel like you're alone. But try to find someone, anyone. I don't care who it is um and tell them what you're going through because you need to hear other voices other than the bully i will say to that i used to talk to my dogs um because and i have a journal but i used to talk to my dog so if talking to animals is easier than humans like i think that is a healthy way to release it they're not judging you honestly they probably just want your love and food um and I'm sure Lindsay will put some like a hotline down in the description if you are dealing with issues, you know, mm-hmm. some bad thoughts. So I just put more work on Lindsay, but I think she'll do it. <laughs> well, that's probably but, a good idea. So yeah, but bullying is a big thing and it happens every day to somebody. So 
if we can even help some one person, that's enough. So, even if it's myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining yeah. us. Shield Maiden Sagas. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <woo. laughs> we are shield maidens and we are strong and we mm. we are flawed. Can... <laughs> But it's time for bed. <laughs> it's eleven o'clock. It's time for bed. <laughs> well, well, have a good night, y'all. Thanks. We'll see you hopefully soon with our next video. Here's hoping. <laughs> Here's Some hoping. consistency would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs>